got to ask the question. Do you have an opinion based on if you had to go with your gut, what, which way it would go? Uh, Sometimes you have to ask it over and over and over again. Why, 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 why? This is 10 Questions with Greg Bedard and Felger and Mass on 98.5, the Sports Hub. All right, 10 questions around the league. 10 minutes with Greg Bedard. Got to stay on time. Kevin, what are our buzzer options? They got a bag for a coach, and they got a bag for an owner. Okay, there we go. Next. Porzingis. Porzingis. Next, please. Particularly Admiral Danny and Quincy. I mean, or as most people know him as Bill Belichick's personal <laughs> dumpster. Thanks, no, guys. Oh, shit. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite call ever, right there. Yeah, pretty vile uh, week of calls. Go ahead. They're a disgrace. It's disgusting. And I'm bang, bang, oh, bang. He oh, got three in. Wow. Open season here on Felgram. As next. Badad, 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 nice. badad. <laughs> that was the last that. one. Okay, hit it, Kevin. Badad, 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 badad. Trade deadline theme. What's been the uh, coolest trade of your lifetime? Most interesting, I mean, and that is any sport, any teams. It's always going to be Herschel Walker trade for me. I mean, it was just, it was humongous. It was stunning. And it basically created the Cowboys dynasty. Wayne Gretzky. I got to go Gretzky. I just think that that was a barrier breaker. It was like an iconic landmark deal. If Wayne Gretzky, what everybody said that day was, if Wayne Gretzky can be traded, anybody can be traded. It changed the whole business forever. I thought about going with that, but most interesting to me it was Ditka sending the Saints whole draft in 99 to the Redskins for Ricky Williams. It was just so wacky. It still is. It obviously didn't work out, but it blew me away. Next. It's disgusting, and I'm back. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> he got three in. Wow. What's the best trade in Patriots history, Greg? Wes Welker. Uh, the, the, you know, they basically fleeced the Dolphins, save him, gave him away, and uh, he was a great player here. Bill Belichick, how do you how do you go back on that one? I mean, that was that was worth everything you gave up for him. He completely altered the franchise along with Brady. Don't get me wrong, but you said trade Belichick. Stealing Randy Moss from the Raiders for a fourth round pick. I know it didn't end up in a championship, but it was fun and hell for a time. Fun as hell for a time. Okay, I'll I'll just give you one that is uh, been lost to history, and it, it it you you look like chumps because this player went on to win. Multiple Super Bowls. But in 1976, you traded... Go ahead, Mass. No, no, no. I, I, I know Jim Plunkett. Yeah, you traded Jim Plunkett uh, for the following. You traded Jim Plunkett for three first-round picks. You got two first-round picks in 1976. You got another first-round pick in 1977. And then you got a second-round pick in 1977. So you got... Three firsts and a second, and then a quarterback named Tom Owen, who actually played for you, yep. for Jim Pluckett. I know Jim Pluckett went on and won Super Bowls, but that's how you built that whole 70, mid-70s team that was phenomenal. Between Mike Haynes and Pete Brock and Tim Fox and Ray Claiborne and Stanley Morgan and like all those guys, that was the Plunkett trade that set you up for that team. Now, you never won anything, but that was because Plunkett was beaten down at the time. It was a great trade at the time. Next. Particularly Admiral Danny and Quincy. I mean, or as most people know him as Bill Belichick's personal <laughs> dumpster. Thanks, no, guys. Oh, shit. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> what was the worst trade in Patriots history? Oh, Muhammad Sanu. I mean, what a joke. Second round pick for eight games and 26 catches. I mean, it just god awful. 1990, the Patriots had the number three pick in the draft. They traded it to Seattle for numbers eight and 10. Number three ended up being Cortez Kennedy, defensive tackle, who went to the Hall of Fame. With eight, the Patriots took Chris Singleton. At 10, they took Ray Agnew. In between them, at number nine, was Richmond Webb, who made seven Pro Bowls for Miami at left tackle. They could have had a Hall of Fame defensive tackle or made the trade and still gotten a Pro Bowl left tackle. Instead, they got two bums. I don't mind the trade. It's the execution of the trade. It was a garbage trade. They take the horse at number three. Two top ten picks for one. Take the horse at number three. I say not getting nearly enough back for Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, it was reported at the time the Browns would have given up four first-round picks to obtain him. Instead, they get a second-round pick back for him. That's brutal. And looking back at it, it's kind of a fireable offense. No, no. Cleveland wasn't going to give them four first-round picks. They were going to give them their first-round pick. 
a yeah. first round. Well, I mean, I mean, if Schefter had that clip or whatever it was, it wouldn't take him four number ones or whatever the hell it was. They could have got more for him. Absolutely, they were offered more for him and turned it down. Next, Porzingis, Porzingis. Give me the most interesting, somewhat realistic trade that should happen across the NFL today. Mac Jones to the Raiders for Garoppolo. Ooh, good one. Ugh. Saquon Barkley to the Ravens. I heard them talking about this this morning. It makes all the sense in the world. The Ravens need a running back. He's an all-purpose, big play kind of player, would really enhance their offense. They gave up a big pick for Roquan Smith last year. Do the same thing the Niners are doing. Go all in. Go get Barkley. Or, for that matter, go get Derrick Henry. A bigger need for Baltimore is a wide receiver because they have Zay Flowers and Trash. So a first and a third to the Raiders for Devontae Parker to Baltimore. Next. Or they got a bag for a coach. Oh, and they got a bad. bag for an owner. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, you guys were saying something? I meant Devont- uh, Devontae Adams. I said Parker. No, yeah, they don't yeah. want Devontae Adams. Yeah, yeah, no one wants him. They want Adams. Yeah. Uh, number six, the Pats were obviously involved in two of the more high-profile coaching trades in NFL history, Parcells to the Jets, Belichick from the Jets. Give me a good coaching trade now. Who should go where and for what? Bill Belichick to the Panthers for Brian Burns, the edge rusher. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like him. Who uh, who Mac Jones t- cheap shotted, right? Yeah, correct. T- yeah. T- tried to rip off his ankle. And, and the thing is, is like it would have to be they would have to write it in his contract that uh, Tepper has to like leave or something because he's so involved. He has these meet like Bill's never going to do that. But you know, it, this reminds me of like when you know Jimmy and Jerry got together with the Cowboys. Like you know, Jimmy was able to sideline Jerry for so long, but then Jerry took over. But Tepper, at this point, he's like, at this point, they sold out for a quarterback. They got the quarterback that they wanted to. They went up to number one. That's not working. At some point, he's going to be like, well, I just got to find the coach. And so why not go get Belichick? The best that there is. Sean McVay to the Patriots for a first, second, and third staggered over two or three years. Oh, we think alike. Sean McVay to the Patriots for two first-round picks and Mac Jones. He'd never live here. He's not leaving the beach for this place. Well, then you want to like my trade. Sean McVay to the Buffalo Bills for (laughs) two first-round picks. Next. Badad, 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 badad. Who's the biggest tool bag in the NFL world right now? The referees, just in general. I mean, these these games are so poorly officiated and inconsistent. It's just like, what the hell's going on? What are we watching every week? Bill Belichick. The emperor has no clothes. Um, with the big boy, the refs, they're out of control. Uh, Brett Favre. Uh, first, he <laughs> steals money from welfare recipients in uh, Mississippi, and then he goes around and sues anyone who says that. And uh, McAfee, the puss, clarified his comments to get out of his lawsuit. Shannon Sharp had the lawsuit dismissed by a judge. The judge took one look at it and said, get out of here, Favre, you dirtbag. And so uh, Brett Favre remains you know, per- perennially the biggest tool bag in the NFL world. Brett Favre, next. There are- Disgrace! It's disgusting, and I'm back. Okay, here's your Raiders bang, question. Bang, three Sorry, after last night's display on Monday Night Football, where do the Raiders go from here, Greg? Quickly, I don't know. I mean, I, they just they have to get the quarterback playing better. I mean, he left. Yes, they had terrible yardage, but he left like two or three bombs to Devontae Parker, like on the field. Like he hits those, they have like 350 yards of offense and more touchdowns, and they might win that game. But I don't know. The Jimmy is just. Not comfortable. He's not playing well in that offense right now. I have no idea where they go, but it's probably one spot ahead of the Patriots. Fire everyone. It's a dumpster fire out there. Next. Porzingis. Porzingis. What's the best team in the NFL right now? After watching the Dolphins defense on film with Ramsey there, and now you know Fangio's been there for half a season now, I think it's the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins are really good. I thought they were a lot more competitive against the Eagles than people want to give them credit for. I do wonder whether this offense can travel in the winter in the playoffs if they have to do that. But I think the Dolphins, I think they're terrific right now. Philadelphia with an honorable mention, too. Uh, I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, what you're pointing at? I thought me. he was going to say Baltimore. No, no, no. I think Jacksonville five and zero in October. They're winning on the road. They're winning at home. They're winning across the pond against the Bills. They got a. They look like a solid football team with a good quarterback that's not screwing it up. That can change on a dime with me, obviously. But for now, I'm going with the Jags. Next, they got a bag for a coach, <laughs> and they got a bag for an owner. If you had to dress up Halloween, if you had to dress up as one NFL figure tonight for Halloween, who would it be? Uh, Andy Reid. Just because, I don't know, I find the guy, like, lovable, and he looks funny, and he's he's got the tool belt and the headset and the, the Cheesecake Factory menu. I don't know. I just, I enjoy him. He makes me laugh when I look at him. I would go as the owner <laughs> of the New England Patriots. However, 
uh, 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 there's a possibility, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'd go as Pete. Go to Home Depot, buy yourself a trash can, paint it silver and black, put a 10 on it, get inside of it, boom, you're Jimmy Garoppolo. You know what? Actually, what I would do, I was I would dress up as the Patriots Gillette Stadium Schmenzer <laughs> and, you know, have a sign that says, like, Providence, Foxborough, Love it. Boston, something like that. Love it. Next, last one. Badad, 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 badad. What's your least favorite part of Halloween? I don't know. I, I love Halloween, but I can't eat the candy anymore. I'm just going to get fat. Like, once I, once I have a piece of candy, like, I'm not going to stop. Preach, girl. So I can't, I can't eat the candy. I hate it. I just want to pig out, but I can't. So it's frustrating. Adult costume parties. Oh, my God. <laughs> hate them. Despise them. A bunch of Felger loves them. I think you look like a bunch of freaking spoons. This is the real. Would get dressed up? No, I... Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. My bad eyesight. I'm so annoyed that I had to do it that I don't even want to talk about it. Go ahead. My bad eyesight. These last couple of years, driving home from here when it's dark and everyone's trick or treating, I'm. It's like feels like it's all a matter of time before it's flattened little ghosts. Like I, I'm terrified driving home at dark and everyone's out trick or treating. I can't see crap now when I drive at night. Okay, I'm not. I'm not even gonna comment. You don't want to hear from me. 